beaming, I'm sure, Kimsey, as beautifully and as proudly as Kate was. I mean, she she did look good, didn't she? Oh, she looked so good. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like we are so invested in this young woman, even in the States, even in, I mean, I should say especially in the States, um, because we, you know, a lot of us grew up with her. We met her when she was in school with Prince William. We watched the evolution of their relationship. We watched the birth of their children. Uh, and we are really committed to the success of this young family and the future of the monarchy. So her absence was felt and she was greatly missed. And we, we saw her, she looked uh, like you said, I, I hate to steal your language, but she was beaming. She looked absolutely lovely, enjoying the company of her children in the carriage. Uh, she looked stunning on the balcony. Um, and I, I just I, I think a lot of us are grateful to see her happy and healthy looking. Yeah, I, I, I think everyone would share that sentiment. What did you kind of take away from the statement from um, Princess Catherine that she released on the Friday, I think it was, where, where she put this line in referring to her illness? and her treatment, I'm not out of the woods yet. What did you make of that? I thought it was very telling myself. I mean, brutal honesty. And I got a lot of negative feedback when I was critical of the Mother's Day photo. Although I always stressed, I felt like it was an innocent mistake. When you release something that has been manipulated, you jeopardize the credibility of not only the media, but the public. And I felt like that that, that was a big mistake. And, and I mean, I, I, it's an innocent mistake, but I did feel like that was a misstep when it came to the palace. We are seeing brutal honesty from the princess going forward. Uh, she is giving us insight that is quite frankly, none of our business, but we're grateful uh, to, over the fact that she is sharing this information with us. To say I'm not out of the woods yet, I think she says I need more time. I'm going to need another beat. Allow me to rest, heal and, and focus on my body and make recovery a priority and we need to be respectful of that because in the weeks leading up to this you saw so much more speculation about whether or not she was going to appear with that speculation turning into we won't see her until 2025 and those types of rumors you know that's gasoline on an open flame when it comes to the princess of wales and social media over the last six months well, and that's unfair for her do you think do you think there's a danger now that she, and, and well, OK, danger is a strong word. I don't mean that. But now that she's done this, that actually it will increase, if you like, public appetite for her. We have, for example, the state opening of Parliament after the election will happen. Should she be by her husband's side there? Or, or do you think that, that actually where the public are is whatever she wants to do is fine by us? We are funny here. We're very quick mm -hmm. to criticise and challenge and then there's this awful rumour and speculation uh, that, that people go into overdrive on. But, but I'm sensing the British public are kind of in whatever you want to do, Kate, you do. Good luck. I completely agree with you. Even royal commentators, I feel like that's where we are. Um, what, yeah, we're grateful when we get to see you. We're thrilled. But there are, there's little to no expectation of when that will be. And I think that that's perfectly fair. You know, even details in that statement about cancer, I feel like we're all affected by cancer in some way, shape or form. I lost two, two people last year to cancer. When, so when she talks about those good days and bad days, you remember the text message you received from somebody that was almost word for word, that those exact things. Or you remember visually seeing somebody the day before that was in high spirits and the next day they're defeated. So we are feeling very sympathetic towards her and we want to make sure that she heals properly and that she has the peace to do so and, and the privacy to do so with her family. I, I mean, you talk in uh, very, I'm probably going to get in trouble here, so be kind to me, Kinsey, here, right? <laughs> you talk in very personal terms uh, about a national affection, effectively. It's almost like you want to own our princess. Trust me, we can send you well, one I mean, or two. I am I'm wearing a shirt with her face on it, so yeah, I can yeah. uh, I can confirm. <laughs> We've sent you one of our princesses back to that part of the world, you know. So, <laughs> so but listen, what can, can you when when you look at something like trooping the colour, which is a big deal in this country when it comes to anything royal. I'm not saying the whole country get behind it, but it it puts us on the world stage. It's it's a huge driver for the visitor economy, and it's a spectacle. I we we like to think we do it better than anyone else. But actually, um, 
how much excitement do these type of royal events create in 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 native america if you like your native america uh are they big news over there do people sit down and watch it absolutely i did several american hits yesterday because we are exactly like you said so envious of the pomp the, the choreography the wardrobe i mean everything is we just can't compete in any way shape or form um, and sp specifically, we're both going through uh, presidential elections that are ugly, that are, I mean, not very, no one's very enthusiastic about them. But what's different between my country and yours is that you have an event like this, where which does bring everyone together. And for a second, you can forget and you can just be patriotic and, and celebrate your country. Um, we rarely have those moments in the States, uh, to the point where the American flag has become some sort of symbol of um, you know, our pa patriotism has become a bad word. So I envy your company, our, your country in, in that uh, element, because the, the royal family really does seem to bring you all together. Uh, it's, it's certain. I think it's certain. You're absolutely right. When you think about the sort of uh, troubled or lively political scene from the, the death of her late majesty to the coronation uh, and even uh, family traumas like this, where you've got the king, who's also, we mustn't forget, undergoing treatment as well. I think it is a unifier in that sense. Listen, uh, Kinsey, I'm just going to read a couple of texts and put a question uh -oh. to you. First of all, uh, talk. You so-called journalists make me sick. I think I'm more a broadcast than a journalist. Leave Kate alone to recover and come back into public life at her own pace instead of over-analyzing everything, says Pauline. Pauline, my answer to that is Kate wanted to go public, and I think there's a reason for that, because I think she actually thinks transparency is helping many people in a similar situation. But thank you for your comment. How? Uh, first, first on that one, Kinsey, what do you say? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that w the one of the reasons that she released that statement and that beautiful photo right before the event was because she didn't want it to be something that overshadowed the king's birthday she wanted to, to be again she, i think that she learned a lesson from the photo event and she is being ridiculously honest with us and up front and um, again I, I said earlier i don't even think that it we're necessarily worthy of it but i i'm appreciative of it and i think that she does want to use this this experience to help other people and she's grateful to the people that are following her journey. And she'll want it talked success. about, won't she? You don't put out yeah. something like that and then expect the media to ignore it, do you? Right. And, you know, I had so many people at, when this was first announced reached out to me that said, I'm going through something similar. I, or I've gone through something similar. How can I contact her? How can I tell her about my experience? Because people do relate to this. And again, everybody wants her happy and healthy. Everybody is invested in the future of her and her family and, and they want to see it her succeed so um i don't i haven't okay. stumbled upon anybody that that is is being negative about this well in Kin kinsey i'm going to put another view to you because i know quite a lot of people share that and it's 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 coming through loud and clear um is uh is this message from neil uh and i'll respond as you wish to this uh nick am i missing something catherine Princess Catherine Neil, come on, put a frock on and stood on a balcony. It's not like she did a 10 hour cleaning shift. Plenty of people with cancer just have to get on with life, says Neil in Swansea. Over to you, Kinsey. I mean, I would say I've, I've had uh, this question presented to me so many times in the States. Does it, does could... it irritate you or does it or does it make you uh, struggle to understand what's behind a question like that? Or do you go, yeah, fair enough? No, I, I don't. I mean, I would never wish to be Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and I love her. She has the world. She is. She receives more negative attention than any, likely any other w woman in the world, aside from Meghan Markle, who I, I think does seem a lot as receive we a can lot come of negative on to attention. <laughs> but but uh, but you know it, that's a tough job to be a woman, a Wales woman. It is a tough job. That Princess Diana, Fergie, um, we're very critical of these women, and and so uh, to stand up in front of the world when you've been. But, you know, I, I won't repeat the rumors that have been circulating online, but they've been absolutely cruel. So to come back out into the world, uh, it was courageous. It, you know, I, I felt like it was very brave and I felt like it, it showed how strong she was because she was putting it into the speculation that has bordered on vulgar and, and real cruelty on social media and bullying. I mean, it truly has been bullying. Has she been bullied? 
Absolutely. I mean, some of the rumors about what has been going on behind the scenes have been ludicrous um, and just vile. A lot of them coming from Harry and Meghan fans. And so she has, you know, she's put an end to it by by showing her face in, in a very vulnerable situation, you know, in front of the world, on the world stage. It wasn't just standing on a balcony and putting on a pretty dress. Um, she knew people were going to criticize everything about the way she looked that day, her behavior, uh, lip readers reading, but you know, re what she was saying to her children within the carriage. She has a very difficult job and I do, I do not envy her position and, but I admire her for taking, taking it on and being so graceful and executing it. Okay. That, um, Kinsey, that, contempt you hold for those people who's, who spread such, frankly, vile suggestions and comments, which I totally get. Um, and you said some of it's coming from the friends of Meghan and Harry. What do you say, though, to the people who, likewise, absolutely no fans of Meghan and Harry, and I include myself in that, um, who, are sp uh, who are happy to spread malicious and perhaps untruths about them as well? I think that you need to look deep and well, first of all, I say get a job because anybody that's busy and thriving and happy doesn't have time to do this kind of stuff. But I'd say that you need to look deep within yourself because um, th that this type of these type of rumors, these type of stories, they negatively affect people in a way that I, I, I don't even want to visit i don't even want to imagine um and we have seen a lot of cruelty thrust at the whales over uh the last few years or over the last year i should over the last few years but specifically over the last year um and we did not know that they were going through something so horrific and traumatic behind the scenes do you think it would have come out or they would have kept it a secret about the way she's now dealing uh, about having the necessary to have the treatment had it not been for as you say, those incendiary and utterly wrong speculation that was going on to a point, by the way, in mainstream media as well in some places. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was on this channel and broke down sobbing when I found out over it because I did feel like the, the video she released was as a result of some of the speculation online and the palace just thought we've got to nip this in the bud. And I felt like we put her in a very unfair position to have to sit there vulnerably and say i'm dealing with something that i really wish i could be dealing with in private most likely let's uh let's finish on something that you may think it's a strange choice of words it's slightly positive but um i think everyone knows that the king's commitment to just duty that he gets from his mother the late queen is like what drives him he he's always been like that king or prince of wales um and the suggestion that was put out there by those who are allegedly in the know is that actually he shouldn't be doing as much as he is, but he's basically told everyone and, 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 and battling with his wife to say, just let me get on with things. Stop holding me back. I kind of like that. I hope he's not putting himself at risk. But do you, do you, do you think that's a fair summary of how his probably attitude is? Let me get on with it. Yes, I, I think he is. I, I don't want to use the word stubborn. I think he's probably stubborn in this in this arena. But I also think he's got an incredible work ethic that we can all really admire. I mean, think about all the 30 somethings that are still living at home with their mom and dad. Um, King Charles is showing us that, that, that you know, that, that get on with it. Get, get up, get ready to put your put your shit socks on, get to work and focus on the positive, focus on the future, focus on um, you know, the blessings in your life. And I think that that's something we can all really admire. Kinsey, thank you very much for joining us. Kinsey Schofield, Royal Commentator.